Praise the Lord. Good day to all of you and welcome to this evangelistic program of the Pentecostal Missionary Church of Christ in the Fort Watch, the Shurer Ward TV. Hello, I'm Pastor Jonathan Ferriol and I would like to minister to you a message entitled From Weakness to Strength. You see, this is the true and real story of biblical Christianity. It's about how weak people are strengthened by the grace and power of the Lord. And it is in this message you will realize how much power we have by being part of God's true church. It is my hope and prayer that as you listen to this message, you will also receive the power from the Lord. Enjoy and be ministered by this great message. With God, we have every reason to be strong. In God, in His true church, we have all the reason to be strong. There is nothing in the world that can really strengthen you and really enable you. Brethren, thanks be to God. We need not to continue a life of foolishness. We must now live a life of wisdom. Serve the Lord. Use your life for the Lord. God is really alive. He speaks and He speaks through His words. So none of the wisdom of the world, none of the ideologies of the world, and we should never even try the human religions because all the religions of humanity are nothing. They are meaningless. In the book of Isaiah 64, 6, it says there that even the most righteous acts of people, the most religious acts of people, the most moralistic acts of people, the most ethical way of living would not suffice to be acceptable and pleasing to God. It says there, all of us have become like one who is unclean. All our righteous acts are like filthy rugs. All our righteous acts are like filthy rugs. When everything is said and done, the most devoted, the most religious of people in the world, all they do is offering filthy rugs before the Lord. Imagine, imagine the great loss. Here, here you are, you're thinking you're offering something acceptable to God, when in reality, you're actually offering rugs, filthy rugs. This is what people are saying. They think they are good enough for God, because they are good parents, they're good neighbors, they are dutiful and conscientious um, a parent or child. But then again, these things are not enough. These things are not actually qualified to be pleasing to God. They are actually what? Filthy rugs. They're just filthy rugs. We all shrivel up, we dry up like leaf. Like the wind, our, swe our sins sweep us away. And is it that true? How many people today are religious but at the same time lost? They are religious. They are like that, that leaf that is blown away and swept away. No human wisdom will really make sense. No human religion will really be empowering and enabling you. How many people today are religious, but at the same time, they are still in bondage of sin? They cannot, they cannot get past. They, 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 they cannot move, move out of that life of, of, of darkness. But at the same time, they are religious. You know why? Because no human religion can really empower a person but if one is in Christ Jesus, if one is in his true church, he will receive the power of the Lord. 
Praise be to God. Even our own human ancestry. Are you with me? I am enumerating to you the things of the world that are really weak. Human ideology and philosophy. Human religion. And number three, even our human ancestry. Our human lineage. It is weak. God doesn't care how, how superior you may be feeling this morning. But you know what? As far as God is concerned, as far as the perfection of God is concerned, because of our sins, because of our own disobedience, this is simply what we are in human form. Hmm? Look at that. In 1 Corinthians 15, 42 to 44, so it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. There will come a time that we will reach our expiration date. Because of our sins, because of our frailty, our body carries an expiration date. It's perishable. Let's continue reading. It is dishonorable, especially a life of sin. You can see the rubbish coming out of their bodies. It is sown in weakness. How weak is the body? A little bit, a little bit of change, a little bit shifting of weather. Just a little bit increase of pollen and allergens. You're beginning. <sighs> You're, we're, we're sick. We're exhausted. We're tired. We're bloated. We're thinning. We're so weak. So our lineage, our ancestry is that of, of being powerless. Romans 5, 6 says, when we were still powerless... That was our life then. That was our life then. Chapter uh, Romans chapter 6 verse 19. We were weak in our natural selves. We were weak in our natural selves. This is the reason why God has sent His Son Jesus Christ. So that we can be empowered. So that we can be enabled. So that the work of the enemy, so that the work of Satan that is weakening us and ruining us and sapping our strength can receive strength from the Lord. So that we can be revived. So that we can be reinvigorated and restrengthened. So that we can be able to stand on our feet again. And the only way for us to overcome the weakness of sin is when we are reborn. Look at that in the book of John in chapter 3, verse 3. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. I mean, you can be the most... Uh, educated person you can be the most religious person but unless you are born again you will never be able to enter the kingdom of god unless you are born of god unless you experience that spiritual renewal and conversion we are actually you know nothing we have no chance to enter the kingdom of heaven God needs to help us God needs to help us to assist us and to empower us in John 6 44 it says there unless the father draws us to him no one can really be drawn to God and thanks be to God consider this preaching as God as God encouraging you as God appealing to you as God bringing you in. You see, that's how God brings us back to Him. He allows the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ through the lips of His apostle and the sent ones of the Lord 
so that those people who are lost can be found and can be brought back to Him. So that those of us who are dead can experience life again without the preaching, without the ministry of the sent ones of God in His true church. No person can really come before God unless you see God telling you this. And unless God brings you this in this way, you won't be able to really come to God on, on our own devices. That's how weak we are. That's, that, that's how narrow-minded we are. We cannot be able to fully understand God without Him helping us. But thanks be to God, God is drawing us in. I don't think none of us would be here. None of us would be here without God encouraging us. But thanks be to God. God doesn't want us to be weak. God doesn't want us to be immobilized or to be paralyzed. God wants us to be empowered, my dearest brethren. And if anyone is reborn, he will become an overcomer. Look at that in 1 John chapter 5 in verse 4. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. Everyone born of God, he is becoming an overcomer. He is becoming a conqueror. Thanks be to God. I am an overcomer. You are an overcomer. We are an overcomer because you have been born of God. So unless you are born of God, yeah, you may be religious, but you are still weak. You may be an ethical person, a good person, a do-gooder, but you are spiritually weak. You need to be reborn by God. You need to be regenerated by God. Once a woman and a man is born of God, he will be given a new spirit. He will be given a new heart. He will be given a new mind. He will be given a new position. He will be given a new destiny. He will be given a new citizenship. Everything in his life will become new. Praise be to God. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And we need to affirm who we are. Because Satan would like us to always remember our past. And our past was bad. Our past was weak. Our past was miserable. If you think your past was good, think again. Because in reality, our past was not good. But now God is giving us a new day and a new beginning. The book of John chapter 1 verse 12. To those who receive him. To those who believe in his name. He gave the right to become children of God. Praise be to God. So we now have a new position. What are we? We are now children of God. We are not mere children of men. We are children of God. The book of Ephesians talks about that our citizenship is now is in, in heaven. We are now citizens of heaven. How about that? Huh? By the way, how many among you are proud U.S. citizens? We are proud to be citizens of this world, but we are prouder to be citizens of heaven. Amen. Say to the one next to you, I'm proud to be a citizen of heaven. And God has not only given us the power on, uh, to our lives, but He has placed us in His church. Yes. That's the good thing. Yes. You see, that's the essence of salvation. Ex agorazo, from the marketplace of sin. We have been brought to that place of the kingdom of the Son He loves. Yes. If God is for us, who can be against us? Yes. Are you getting this? Yes. Uh, are you getting this into your spirit, huh? Hmm? Or it's just too much? Oh, Pastor John, it's just too much truth. So much good stuff. That's good. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Are you being empowered? Are you being empowered? Praise the Lord. 
The Bible says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Let's actually read that in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 31 to 39. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns Christ Jesus who died? More than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered a ship to be slaughtered. No! Everyone say, no! no. Come on, everyone say, no. no! To God be the glory. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Can I hear the amen of all the more than conquerors? For I am convinced that neither death nor life, angels or demons, present or the future or powers, height or depth or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3. The weapons we fight with have power to demolish strongholds. We have powerful armaments and weapons. Our teachings, our doctrines are surer words of prophecy. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19. We have the word of the prophets made more certain. And you will do well to pay attention to it like a light shining in a dark place. Until the morning star dawns in your hearts. How many here have the right doctrine? Say amen. amen. How many here are living according to the right doctrines? Amen. To God be the glory. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11. We have the armor of God. And we can be able to stand up against the schemes of the devil. Don't you live your life like you're weak. Don't you live your life as if you have nothing. You have the power of God. You have the armor of God. You know, it's, it's stop being a pushover. It's stop being a wimp. Mm. Mm. Uh. Uh. I mentioned this to you. Do not let the world bully you. Wimp. But you are not a wimp. You are more than a conqueror. Oh, that's good word from Dr. Jonathan. No, that's from Dr. Jesus. Are there other books here? Are there other books here? Am I not simply reading from the word of God? And these are the words of God for us. We are not weaklings. We can now say we are strong. To God be the glory. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. By His divine power, God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. You know, brethren, let me slow down a little bit. There was a time in the time of Isaiah that the Hebrew people were beginning to be weakened. And, you know, in all realistic uh, appraisal of things, we get weak sometimes, right? Paul himself said that. We get weakened. We get discouraged. We get intimidated. And more often than not, sometimes we surrender also our faith. But there is always the word of God reminding us. And when the enemy begins to push you back, and make you step back rather than move forward. Look at me. Remember these words of God in the book of Isaiah chapter 40. I want you to find positive message from these words. Look at that. Isaiah 40, 27 
to 31. This is where I'm going to conclude. What a wonderful conclusion this is. Why do you say, O Jacob, O complain, O Israel? Why do you say, Jacob, complain, O Israel? O people of God. Sometimes we are quick to complain, but slow to trust. We are quick to drop Christ rather than hold fast to Him. We're like Peter. Peter was only asked by women servants, aren't you one of the disciples of Jesus? You sound like them. No. No, I'm not. I even don't know him. That's how weak we are. We complain. Like Jacob, like Israel. My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Do you not know? Some of us live our lives as if we do not know. What are you thinking? Come on. Sober up. Snap out of it. Do not think. Do not live as if you do not know. You know. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And His understanding no one can fathom. To God be the glory. He gives strength to the weary. Increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. And this is my most favorite one. But those who hope in the Lord, those who wait in the Lord, those who watch in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. Hallelujah. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. People of God, watch. Let's wait upon the Lord. Jesus Christ said, here's what I'm telling to you and I say to everyone, watch. And we are in a time of watching and waiting. And those who hope in the Lord will be empowered. The Bible says that while we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. And like what I said a while ago in my message that the world is a place of weakness. There is nothing in the world that can really empower, enable, and strengthen us. Most particularly with our effort to understand God. In our sins, we are weak. And probably at this moment, while you are watching this program, you are also going through your days of weakness. You are probably struggling with a season of weakness and a season of emptiness. And I want you to understand that God loves you, that God is your source of power and strength. And this program is here to minister to you that blessing of power. All you needed to do is confess your sins to God and realize that you are weak on your own. Left to your own devices, you are incapacitated, you are weak in everything. But you know what? You do not need to despair because God is your strength and your power. He will help you. He will lift you up. And all you needed to do is call upon Him. And we are here to minister to you. Call us and enable us to minister to you. There are telephone counselors at the end of the line that are seeking to minister to you a word of counsel and, and biblical uh, advice and prayer as well. And we do hope and we do pray that you will continue to watch this program each week on this particular channel. And we want you to understand that there's no need for you to surrender and to succumb to this weakness from sin. You can be empowered. The Bible says that greater is He who is in us than he who is in the world. You have hope, you have power, you have strength. Again, thank you very much for watching the Sure World Television Ministry. Until next time, God bless you.